Hello everyone and welcome back to Clinical Cousins YouTube channel. Today we're going to go over some of the more common ST and T segment abnormalities that we're going to see on our patient's EKG. So these are just some very great general rules to look out for when you're evaluating an EKG. So we know that the ST segment shown here roughly correlates with the mechanical event. Uh, remember, not electrical. This correlates with the mechanical event of ventricular contraction. So uh, when the QRS uh, stimulates the ventricles, uh, the depolarizes the ventricles, this represents after the ventricles have been depolarized, the heart is electrically silent, but we are having ventricular contraction at this time. Uh, and we also know that the T wave correlates with the repolarization of the ventricles. So we depolarize from base to apex and we repolarize from apex to base. That's a good little test question for you. So some good facts to know right off the bat is that any ST depression or ST elevation with or without a T wave inversion is usually indicative of some sort of ischemia or injury uh, if the patient is symptomatic or if it's new onset. So it's good to know how to watch out for these findings. So we should also know that the T wave is usually associated with this negative repolarization wave. You can see I've drawn the negative wave here. So it travels in a sort of upwards and rightward direction. Remember our heart's kind of sitting like this. So uh, this is why the T wave is usually inverted in AVR. Remember if this negative, if negative repolarization waves are like mean girls and this is our guy right here, he is not going to be very happy that, uh, that this negative wave is coming right at him. But uh, conversely, we'll know that uh, if the mean girl's headed away from you, uh, specifically leads 1, 2, uh, V3, V4, V5, and V6, then these are going to be positive. These are going to be happy that this repolarization vector is heading away from them. So we know that it's going to be, uh, T wave is going to be negative in AVR, and it's going to be positive in 1, 2, and then V3 through V6. So we must also know an important point that the end of the QRS complex is called the J point. This is where uh, this is the division of our QRS complex from our ST segment. So uh, the J point is kind of cool because it can tell us different information about how healthy our heart is. So the J point is usually sharp, but if it's rounded or undefined, like we'll see in our uh, tombstone T's that we'll look at, it means that uh, it could just be an early repolarization pattern that's commonly seen in, in younger people. Uh, for example, I have this in, in all my EKGs that, that I've had on myself, or uh, it could be in sign of a strain or pericarditis or even an acute myocardial infarction as we'll see here in just a second. So uh, it's important to watch out for those sharp and diffuse uh, J points. So we also need to be aware that the ST segment itself could also be uh, indicative of, of some pathology. So we should know that the ST segment should be directly in line with the TP segment. So how do you measure this? Well, we have to take a ruler on our TP segment and if it's not directly in line with the ST segment, then we have to have some sort of uh, depression or elevation and that requires some further evaluation. So remember that it is normal to have an ST uh, elevation or depression of one millimeter uh, from the baseline, this is the baseline, the TP segment, in the limb leads. We also know that an ST variation of 1.5 millimeters for women, two millimeters for men older than 40, and 2.5 millimeters for men younger than 40 is also normal. So really evaluate any ST elevation or depression, but it's a good general rule to, so you don't freak out in your mind that uh, these are the guidelines to use for different ages and different uh, genders. So uh, what's really cool about the ST segment is that uh, it comes in a lot of different shapes, all different shapes and sizes and flavors. So it'll tell us how the heart muscle is doing. So for example, if we have some concave up shapes, it likely uh, could indicate some sort of strain pericarditis, or it could just be normal. Uh, if we see some flat or depressed ST segments, then we could have some sort of ischemia. Uh, specifically, uh, it could indicate a subendocardial ischemia. Uh, if we have an ST depression that is also inverted, uh, we'll see in our, in our later videos that we'll post uh, that this could indicate a potential strain pattern. Uh, and if we have a flat or elevated ST segment with or without T wave inversion, this could indicate some sort of injury. So like I said, always, always uh, monitor for the ST elevation. This could be something serious. And lastly, we always come to the, the tombstone uh, T's or the tombstone ST's as, as you'll see them called. So this is like a big rounded ST segment that looks like a tombstone. And I've drawn a little dead guy here because this likely indicates a massive ventricular infarction 
or a ventricular aneurysm. Both of these conditions do not support life, so if you do not do anything about it, then you are going to have a dead patient very soon if they're not likely um, dead already uh, while you're reading the EKG. So uh, that brings us on to our conversation about the T wave. So it should normally be asymmetrical. So remember, when you see a T wave, a little lean to the right when you're looking at the EKG is all right. A little lean to the right is all right. So uh, this is because completely symmetrical T waves uh, or mirrored T waves are associated uh, oftentimes with ischemia or some types of electrolyte abnormalities as we'll see here in just a second, or even uh, CNS changes like a uh, massive uh, CVA, a cerebrovascular accident, also known as a hemorrhagic stroke. Uh, so a good way to check a T wave that I like to do is I like to pretend like it's a pile of dirt. And I use a, a little ruler to drop a stake in it. So uh, if there's more dirt on the, on the right side, then we know that we're looking good. But if it's completely symmetrical, there's equal amounts of dirt on either side, then we know that this is, this is not good. So that brings us to the conversation of really broad T waves. So this could indicate hyperkalemia or a cerebrovascular accident, also known as a hemorrhagic stroke. And we go over this in our hyperkalemia management video. So if you, if you need a quick refresher, um, go check that out really quick and then come back to this. But uh, it's likely that whatever school you're in, they're going to teach you that tall tinted T waves are a sign of hyperkalemia on the EKG. And this is all they teach you. And this is true, but it's only uh, true in the very, very early stages. In fact, if your patient has a sinusoidal rhythm with broad T waves that are kind of hard to detect, like this. So for example, if this was the baseline and this was the baseline, this would be very, very broad. Uh, we have to remember that this could indicate hyperkalemia. So uh, hyperkalemia, you know, the heart becomes paralyzed and eventually it pulls that EKG string into a flat line. You have a dead patient. So remember that broad T waves can indicate hyperkalemia or possibly a hemorrhagic stroke. Now, what about the size of the T waves? So you're going to say, well, that one's not very tall. Well, how tall should they be? So they should be small in amplitude, meaning the height should be small. Specifically, they should be less than six millimeters in the limb leads and less than 12 millimeters in the chest leads. But this can vary in, in some people. So a good uh, general rule to remember that is that the T wave should be uh, less than two thirds the height of the R wave. So remember that the chest leads, they can be a little bit bigger. The chest leads are closer to the heart. Uh, that means more of those electrical impulses from the heart are going to be generated uh, and read by those leads. So it's okay if they're a little bit bigger in the precordial leads. In fact, we expect this. But a great rule is that the R wave uh, should be about a third taller than our T wave. Or in other words, the T wave should be less than two thirds the height of the R wave. So a good recap, uh, a good T wave is what? It should be asymmetrical. It should be upright in leads one, two, and then V3 through V6. And it should be small or less than two thirds the height of the R wave. We must remember that we want um, some sharp J points. Uh, we should always evaluate ST elevation uh, in any patient further um, because we do know that oftentimes it, it can be as associated with uh, ischemia or injury or perhaps an infarction. And a good rule is to uh, compare the ST segments and T waves uh, across all the leads, see what's, see what's in common, see what's different in, in some leads. This could uh, lead you to uh, maybe have a good catch of something that would have been missed by uh, other providers or other people who are reading the EKG. You could potentially catch uh, a STEMI, uh, a non-STEMI. You could potentially catch a massive infarction or a ventricular aneurysm. So this is just a little bit, uh, a broad introduction about the STNT uh, abnormalities. So uh, be sure to tune into our other videos uh, coming up to uh, where we take a, a deeper dive into some of the uh, more serious and life-threatening EKG changes. So as always, thank you for taking the time to learn with us today, and remember to like and subscribe for more content.